<laughs> welcome, welcome. It feels like it has been forever since we've actually had one of these classes and uh, it's been quite a while since I've actually even done a video on this channel. So welcome if you're interested, in, excuse me, if you're interested in painting and drawing a space panda today, today is your day. So what's happening with you today? Uh, you just got back from the 4th of July. Hopefully you had a great time and uh, I'm excited that you are here. If you're new here, my name is Paige. Paige, and I'm the Chief Pixel Pusher and Paint Brusher over at Gumption and obviously I'm having too much fun uh, with gifts here lately. Uh, but welcome and today we like I said, are going to be doing a space panda, and you're probably going to want to download this sheet, and you can get that in the description below. So uh, there is a downloadable link there, and we're just gonna be using this as a reference. Uh, these are some pandas that I've sketched out, and you can pick any panda that you want to draw today. I'm actually gonna be drawing with you in real time, so. I think we're going to have some fun. I want you to uh, think outside the box today and think about what space pandas might have with them in space. So uh, this class, I'm hoping this class will take about an hour. So if you're new here, hopefully it will be about an hour. It could go over a little, a little over. I welcome questions. So if you have questions, go ahead and throw them in chat there and uh, I'll answer them as I can kind of see that they're coming up. Um, also, I'm using watercolor and colored pencil today if I can get that far. Uh, so you can use you can use either or, uh, but we'll start in watercolor first and then go to colored pencil. If you want to learn more about me and my company, you can go to IHaveGumption.com and check that out. And I think that might do it. Uh, one thing, if you've been in this series of classes, we have talked about using heat for uh, colored pencils. So if you want to use a little bit of heat with your colored pencils, it melts it really nicely. So you have a little smoother surface with your pencil. So you can use a heating pad with an upside down cookie sheet to make that happen. Um, and you can see, where you go from there. I'm in a new location today, so I don't have my hot board with me on this location, uh, but it really works. So, okie dokie. So let's talk for a minute, kind of this process that we're gonna walk through today. I actually do this process a lot when I'm concepting for stickers. And again, you can go visit my website and you can kind of see those stickers and how I get started with them. But we have several positions that this panda is in and we can pick one of them and kind of modify it if we'd like to create our own kind of funky space panda fella. So if you're interested in kind of creating your own illustrations, um, this might be a great class for you. All right, so we're gonna switch our view here to an overhead view. And we'll kind of get started here. So again, if you're just tuning in, you're probably going to want to check out this sheet. Uh, you can download it. It is in the description below with this video. And uh, let's see if I can find my example painting. This was a little example illustration and painting that I did here for this class. So you can see which position I used that I altered for the sketch was this guy. And you can pick any of these or modify it somehow uh, to make your space panda. So I'm gonna start sketching. Uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and throw them in the comments. One of the things that I love is hearing uh, different ideas from my nephews because they have good imaginations as to what a space panda would have in space. What would your panda have in space? So I'm going to show you this, this pencil. I'm going to use a coal erase pencil. These are uh, a lot of teachers used to use these to grade 
They probably don't use them anymore, but they are erasable pencils and they're kind of great for watercolor because they erase. So, uh, and sometimes they're a little bit nicer than say a pencil with lead in it. Okay, I'm gonna scoot. Hopefully you can see there. So how I, I'm gonna use this guy for my overall space panda, like he's just sitting there in space. And I kind of just loosely am going to sketch out his whole shape here. When you're drawing, it is easier to start with big shapes and then kind of refine them. And so you can see Every time I touch this camera, it just, let's try her one more time. Maybe. <laughs> Sorry about that. Every time I touch this thing, it, it's kind of touchy. There we go. All right. Let's try this again. And we'll see if I can gently zoom in here. So you can see I'm really lightly sketching, kind of just making some markers for where the ears are where this hand is. And I kind of thought that maybe this panda, you know, he has to be careful when he eats in space because his hamburger that he's eating will disappear. I'm gonna have him eating a, a hamburger. So I thought, what if his hamburger was in a container that had a straw in it and then that would be kind of fun. Then he wouldn't lose his burger. So I'm just lightly sketching him in. Of course, he's going to have to have a helmet and all this jazz. So think about all those things that your panda could have while he's hanging out in space. The point is to have fun with this. You know, your watercolors do not always have to be serious paintings. You know what I mean? Hey, Colin, it's nice to see you here hanging out. Are you drawing a space panda with us too? <laughs> It's, I feel like it, it has been a while since we've done a YouTube. Last week, we tried to do a Patreon Zoom class. And, you know, with I had kind of forgot that uh, that it was the holiday and I had decided to take some time off for the holiday. I guess we, we didn't make our Zoom the week before. So it has been a couple weeks bef since I have had a class. Pandas are really fun to draw because they're so kind of really pulley round. Cute. And you can kind of make them um, represent it, you know. Um, oh, what am I trying to say here? You don't have to be exacting. You can be kind of fun and create a caricature of them. This might be kind of weird, this burger thing, but you know, we're going for it. So a lot of times when you are doing something that's round, I will use something that is round. 
as a guide. I guess I don't have anything that's close by that's big enough. But if you have like a bottle like this, you could use, you know, use it for your guide. He's going to have a really big helmet, I guess. So a lot of times when I am working on these illustrations for stickers, you know, I'm starting them in the iPad and kind of whittling them down. Thinking of, you know, first off, you're starting with a concept. And then, you know, I'll look at nature photos to kind of see how, how the animal is shaped. And then you can kind of stylize it from there. You can see that I did not test this theory beforehand. <laughs> so but that's what kind of makes it fun. It's like the Jetsons, but with pandas. Pandas kind of have weird bodies with these short, dumpy legs. need to but you can see with the cola race pencil I have a couple here I think you can pick these up a lot of places um, but of course you could use a regular pencil to you but I know a number of artists that actually use these for their watercolor. And you might have to alter And he also might have like a pack. I'm going to just hint at a pack here on his back. And of course, because his helmet here is clear, we'll see some of that pack come through and maybe We'll have this kind of oxygen hose thing coming off the back. Remember, this is sort of make-believe, so you can do whatever you want with your guy. All right, so I'm probably at a point here where I could actually get to painting. Um, I, I've seen this technique. You've probably seen me do it on here. Uh, this is a kneaded eraser and it's kind of nice to roll it over your illustration to pick up any extra lead that might be there. This definitely will show through in my 
my painting. Now, whether you're going to be painting with me or you're going to be drawing, you can decide. And I guess I just need to figure out what color I want him to be. So I'm going to wet my paints here. Again, if you're just tuning in, you can actually access this uh, sheet here in our description. And we're just using these as kind of a starting point for our Space Panda. This is a sticker concept that I've been working on and then I used him as a demo here. And so you can follow along with this one or you can follow along with me or create your own. Okay. So first, I'm probably going to start with the areas that I want to have as a light blue or that is looking transparent. So I'm going to mix a lot of water with a blue color. I'm going to use an ultramarine blue here and it's going to be very light. Hopefully we can kind of scoot all of this over a little bit. Got pencils, erasers, so just a really light amount and you can always go back and make it darker if you want. But this, you know, this isn't a ton of water here, but just enough for the small illustration. And I'm just going to kind of put it in this area where the helmet is. And he's got this glass globey thing that he's got his... hamburger in. This way, when you are, you know, as you're painting and you're doing this as your first step, it doesn't drag it through other paint and then create a mess in your, in your illustration. So that's why we are doing this first. And let's see. I might want to kind of just lift this a little bit. Okay. I think I could also use, much like I did with this one, use this light blue color in his white body because, and you could use actually several colors to represent the white area. You can even, I might even mix in a little bit of yellow. just to give him some dimension, maybe a shadow. I don't know if there's really a shadow in space, but. I'll zoom in here a little. Maybe you can see that. If you're just tuning in, let me know that you're here and say hello. I know that Laurel and Colin are here, um, but if you're new and you're tuning in, say hello. Okay. Okay. 
So I think I'm going to make him a purple color where his dark parts would be. And you can create a purple by mixing ultramarine blue and alizarin crimson or a blue and a red. And I'm just gonna, because I've used this purple pencil, it might work just fine. And I'm just moving that bead here to the end of his foot. And when I say moving the bead, you see this, where this water is collected. So you can just need a little bit more here. <laughs> I'm gonna get a little bit bigger brush here. just get this arm I need a little bit more pigment I feel so we'll kind of not focusing very well is it what's kind of fun about uh, colors that you mix yourself is how they separate uh, a little bit and create some interesting colors there And I think we can I may want to lift a little bit of this as it is the kind of that glass part that goes into this glass globe where his hamburger is. And let that dry. This is a little tiny, I guess it is a dagger brush, maybe. Kind of nice because it's got this kind of unusual shape that kind of helps you get into tight areas. And I'm going to try to reserve this area for the eye. Sometimes watercolor has a mind of its own. I can always dab a little bit more pigment in there and it will flow where water has been. So it's great about watercolor.
course, your panda can be any color that you want. But he's starting to look like a panda a little bit. I might kind of draw a line here. Kind of a cute little guy. All right. And you could even do, you could use that same color. You can, uh, to kind of sketch in your helmet color. So I've kind of just mixed a little more blue. may have to turn your page a little bit. Oops, let's zoom out a little. If you need to. If you need to get at an area. I like to cut my papers a little bit smaller for these classes and Sometimes it just makes it a little bit easier. Okay, so let's see, what am I gonna do next? I'm gonna paint this hamburger next. And it's, so I'm going to take, I have a, a kind of a burnt sienna color that I'm mixing here. You probably can't see it very well. This brown color. We're going to do the bun here. That's a big hamburger. <laughs> he was hungry. He's hanging out in space, checking out the view. I seriously can't wait to hear your stories about what your space panda is doing. So we can't forget the bottom part of the bun. He's probably a vegetarian, you know. Uh, he's got a veggie burger in there. What's great about using watercolor first here is, you know, it makes it pretty hard to use colored pencils and then use watercolor over the top because usually they're wax pencils. But you can cover a lot of ground with watercolor and then you can go in and do the details with your colored pencil after the fact so for laurel and family as you guys are using your colored pencils with your cookie sheet and heating pad that'll just make those colored pencils mix 
a little bit easier, but you can certainly do painting first if you want. So we'll put some tomatoes in there, need a little red. I have to laugh because my husband is just hates tomatoes and I am a tomato lover. And we, I made a dip for us here that had tomatoes in it and, and my husband won't touch it now. He cannot stand the smell <laughs> of tomatoes. And we got a whole lot of tomatoes, um, more than we needed. And so he, he's not super happy with me because I'll have a uh, tomato, just eat it, you know, and put a little pepper on it. And uh, he does not think that is cool. <laughs> which just kind of cracks me up a little bit because it's, he really doesn't like them. For this glass container that this is in, I'm just going to kind of define this a little bit. It's kind of like it's floating in there, which is a little bit funky, but we'll roll with it. Kind of weird, but I figured he could, you know, if he could suck it up through the straw, he wouldn't lose it in space. Okay. So we're gonna start adding some other colors here. So he kind of has a little more dimension. I'm gonna zoom out here. He's got this little star. On his helmet. kind of fun and I'm going to color his backpack a little bit this is a phthalo green color and it is really pretty when you paint it out We're not doing too bad for time, are we? And maybe we'll have a little bit of, maybe reflection. A little shaky. I have had quite a bit of caffeine today, so <laughs> there, there's that. That might be a little bluer, greener than I wanted but if you if you wind up with a little surprise well just roll with it it's kind of part of the fun
So I am excited to report that um, I have a new class that's going to be coming out here at the Pocatello Art Center online. So it's going to be all about working digitally and getting you started to use the iPad or a digital program to start illustrating and using it as a medium. So if you're interested, go over to the Pocatello Art Center uh, YouTube or you can go to the website. Uh, I have not posted the class just yet, but it is coming soon. The very first one is coming. And we're gonna do an assignment together. And I'm gonna talk to you about the different kinds of digital art that you can do, uh, where you might even start with that, what it may or may not cost you. And you are gonna do your first assignment with me. So this is like a four or five uh, video live, well, it's a video uh, class and we'll kind of be doing different things all the time. And then if you're a member of the Art Center, then you can get in on the Zoom call where you can get feedback for your artwork. So if you are interested, go check out Pocatello Art Center. It's kind of one of the reasons that I haven't, I have been really busy and I haven't done a lot of regular videos here on this channel because I'm working and I've got a lot going on in the summer because of our farmer's market and everything. So I haven't left YouTube, but I just, uh, it's been impossible to stay caught up. So I'm thinking that we'll have a summer schedule where we do live classes and then I'll do more lives and videos in the winter time. Whoops, so that one was still a little wet, but that's okay. So how are you guys doing out there? Hopefully your pandas are turning out all right. I know that uh, sometimes the drawing process is much longer can take a little bit longer. And if you have certain things that you would like to see on the channel, this is kind of the first thing that we've done quite like this. It's kind of a draw and paint kind of a deal. Please share with me. I love suggestions and uh, would love to explore different things. I'm excited that we, we have moved into kind of this um, colored pencil realm. We've talked about gouache a little bit here on this channel. Of course, lots of watercolor. But it's nice to change things up and uh, just try different things. So I am going to, I think I'm going to break out some colored pencils here. And some of these areas aren't quite dry, but some are. Now, if you haven't seen how I keep my colored pencils, I keep them in a utensil container along with everything else. And uh, it's a really handy way to keep your 
colored pencils organized, especially if you're using them a lot. But you don't have to keep them in their nice containers. You can break outside the box, color outside the lines. So I'm just grabbing some colors that I think might work here. I can add a little bit of detail. And you can add a little bit of vibrance here with your colored pencils. Because what I'd like to keep are these interesting areas here where you have this paint where it's separated. and But then we can go in and add some detail. Let's see, what do I have here? And I always recommend testing your colors before you commit. But you can see how easy it is to go in and kind of add some more detail. with your pencils. Because you may or may not have, you know, narrow brushes that, you know, you could get in these tiny areas. But if you're struggling with watercolor, I always recommend you can either use watercolor with um, pens, black pens, uh, or you can use watercolor with colored pencils and kind of use a combination of the two. Um, just until you kind of get to understand the medium a little bit more because watercolor sometimes is really hard to get used to using. And there's no rule that says you can't help yourself and use other tools along with watercolor. So we're gonna see if this white will show up here. Not so great here. That's where the eraser kind of comes in. If you have a battery powered eraser, it's super handy. And I'm just kind of going along some of these areas Adding some detail. All I want for you is for you to have fun. Kind of explore your imagination. I find that this is something that I always feel like I need to do more of. And I love doing it with stickers because it's kind of a, a small project. It's not to uh, intimidating, it's just a quick, quick idea. This is part of the helmet, but it doesn't quite look like it, does it? And it's kind of fun to really try colors that you don't think are 
traditional colors that you use for pandas. Maybe you have a pink panda. What's great about using a pencil too is you can really do a little fur here. This is a, a black raspberry color. need a teal color but we will work with this here and I suppose we could put his eyes in here make him look like You can do a little cross hatching if you want. And you can see with my white pencil, I should, should show up a little better. In the, with your dark colors here. Maybe show a little fur. Some furry knees. I'm kind of wondering if he needs to have some fries somewhere here too what do you think <laughs> we have a little bit of time here so i might uh hmm. might have to have some floating fries out here Again, I'm using this Cola Race pencil. They come in all kinds of colors. Probably most commonly, you might be familiar with the blue. Uh, lots of times, illustrators uh, before digital work, um, and even I still use generally kind of a blue when I'm sketching digitally. Uh, but they would sketch in a red or a blue color and then go back over and ink it and then the blue in theory doesn't show up
after you ink it. And I suppose he'd have like, maybe he would have this attached to himself somehow. It actually might be better on the side. Also, just a heads up for my patrons who I think are on here still with me. I'm going to start a, using our Patreon for a sticker club. So because you guys are at a certain level, you'll be in on that and it won't affect you at all. But you might get some stickers out of the deal. I have some fun ones kind of coming up that I have been working on and if you if you know me in real life you know that I sell stickers over at our local farmers markets and you can check those out at ihavegumption.com but we've got some fun stuff coming for sticker of the month club and my plan is to release that here in August so you'll see me kind of posting about it a little bit in social media. And uh, that is what it's about. There's just been so much going on here lately that uh, just wading through it all here. Okay, so I'm going to start with this guy and... I'm just going to use a little bit of this blue color in hopes that it will feel a bit like glass. And while that dries, I will, I'm going to paint a chain on this real quick or some kind of string attachment. And if you tuned in late tonight, um, just know that you can download this sheet and create your own Space Panda if you want to. It's in the description and you can grab that link there. I, I'm not sure that this really looks like a straw. This is kind of a weird contraption, but hey, it's okay. It could be the wave of the future. The goal is just to have fun. And really to make this look like it's in front of uh, the panda, you know, we're using a little bit darker color here. And a trick is to use a little bit thicker lines when you have something that's closer. I'm not sure how that translates into the camera, but when you're sketching or drawing an illustration, line weight is a thing. 
And so our bigger shapes usually have thicker lines when we're drawing with line. Finer details have a thinner line. Okay, let's get these fries painted. I'm just using a kind of a medium uh, yellow here. Actually really gotten to love medium yellow in recent years. It's kind of funny, I'm not an orange fan either. It's my least favorite color, but in recent years, I've actually gotten to where I enjoy using it for certain things too, so just never know. So now I want to hear from you guys. I want to hear how your pandas are doing if you paint it along. with me and is this a kind of a uh, an assignment that you'd be interested in doing more of where you're kind of just doing something from your imagination Kind of waiting for this to dry. Maybe I'll use a colored pencil there. If you're not subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you want to see more of my content. You want to see more space pandas. So while this water dries here, because it's still wet, I figured, you know, I can just color this in with a pencil. Kind of avoid the water. <laughs> oh, good. I'm glad to hear that. That's awesome. So Laurel says they're just coloring away. So I am excited about that. Just fun to do something a little bit different. So you can see here that there's quite a bit of a different feel with the colored pencil than there is with the watercolor. Uh, if you're using the method where you're using heat with a uh, heating pad and a cookie sheet turned upside down, you can have some really smooth transitions here. And you can as well with the colored pencil. I call it kind of burnishing where you're kind of kind of go around in a circle and you make sure that you fill in all of these areas that have this white. I'm not pressing too hard. I'm just gently kind of coloring in this area to get a nice solid color. I'm going to go back in with another color to blend. We will use a red color. You kind of just do the same thing with it. And you can kind of see how that can blend light nicely if you're uh, using colored pencils and not painting tonight. Or you're using a combination of the two.
We'll kind of fill in the background here of these this fry container. I'm not sure if it <laughs> looks like a weird chicken thing or what. Hopefully it looks like a fry container. Just for fun. But you can definitely see that there's a different feel with a colored pencil than maybe the watercolor. But that's the fun of exploring and just trying things out. You have to give things a try. Because really, a lot of times, especially in the art realm, you don't know what you don't know. And you don't know what you like until you've had an opportunity to just play around. Maybe even make mistakes and have some surprise successes sometimes. But you can see, we'll demonstrate here. I guess you can paint a little bit over your colored pencil, but because it's wax, it'll be less predictable. Okay, so let's see. What questions might you have for me before I let you go? We're at an hour mark, and I'm glad that we were able to kind of squeeze it all in here. Um, yeah, throw your questions at me here. Or comments if you have some classes that you would like to see in the future. Switch our camera here. Hopefully you have enjoyed this class. And I look forward to, uh, let's see, next week, I think we might have a Patreon class next week. I'll have to check my calendar there. You can always check my calendar on the website and see where I'm at because there is one day of the month, one Thursday out of the month that we're doing Patreon stuff and I am not on YouTube. But that reminds me, a big thank you to my patrons Colin and Laurel for being consistent and always showing up here and uh, painting or at least hanging out and watching painting. Thank you for your support. You make this happen. <laughs> All right, that's good, Laurel. I'm sure that your little artiste didn't need any help from me. So I'll be excited to see what they did. And thanks, Colin. I appreciate that. Um, if you guys draw a panda or paint a panda, I want to see it. So tag me in social media and uh, I'll definitely I'd love to check it out. And so you can find me there. All right. Well, I think that about wraps up this class. If you have questions or comments after this class is aired, you can always leave a comment and I get back to you. And I hope that inspires you to do a little creative illustration or painting and just have a little fun with it. So thanks for tuning in and I will see you later.